Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the D-Time Love Show. Today we've got another new episode of Real Watch Talk. And today's subject is a very interesting one because I've been asked this question many a times. I've just never got around to really explaining how I do things, how I approach buying a new watch and how I go about negotiating a discount for a particular luxury timepiece. I've helped a few friends out recently in terms of purchasing a watch. I've bought a few new watches from particular authorized dealers. And today's video is really gonna explain my approach and how I go about getting a discount on a particular watch that I'm looking to buy. But before we go into to that, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Today, I'm sporting my Rolex Date Just 16014 with the white gold fluted bezel, that gray dial. I love this watch. It's my go-to everyday business watch. It's my birth year. It just goes when I'm suited and booted. It makes me feel important and it's, it just brings me luck, this watch, guys. I don't know why, but every time I wear it, things go my way. So it's my good luck charm. You know, I've got a very good relationship with this watch, I have to say. I love it with the Jubilee bracelet and it's never let me down. Beautiful. Thank you, Roly for all your help over the years. But anyway guys, let's get straight into the matter in hand. How do I go about buying a brand new luxury timepiece? With anything in life guys, you have to use your business acumen, okay? This is the negotiation, okay? In this instance, you wanna get the best possible deal available, okay, that's out there for that particular timepiece. But first of all, you need to find out where that product, where that timepiece is available. You need to see where it is in stock and how accessible it is within your geographic location or whether there are any price differences within different geographic locations or different countries. But with all honesty, you know, I live in London, so when I'm looking for a watch, I, my first point of call is London. London is a very, very big city and different parts of London have a different sort of traffic of retail customer coming through their doors. So let me put it to you like this. The first aspect of my research when I'm buying a luxury timepiece, I don't tend to go Bond Street or Sloan Square, for example, to buy my luxury timepiece. I'm more likely to go on Greater London where there is slightly less competition because the actual ADs are less likely to give you a discount because they don't need a discount. They've got multi-millionaires walking through their doors on a daily basis. So it means absolute sense. So first of all, consider location, okay? If you go to the most, most expensive area in your catchment area within your geographic location, the likelihood is that authorized dealer does not need to make a big discount to get you to buy that watch because they have people coming in buying watches on a daily basis, guys. For them buying a 10 to 15K watch is absolutely nothing um, to them within that, that area. Because everyone with a social economic status in Sloan Square or Chelsea, you know, they're grade A or B, you know, that, that is the truth. They're not, there's more multi-millionaires there than anywhere else in London, for example. So for me, I'd go on greater London, even outskirts of London, where I feel I potentially could get a very good deal. Secondly, timing is absolutely key, guys. Now, timing, what I mean by this is, a lot of people shop during the festive period, they buy people luxury watches or a watch for Christmas or Valentine's Day, wherever it may be, you know. You wanna avoid those times when buying a watch, really, if I'm being honest with you. Just after the festive period is absolutely great. Just after Christmas, in the new year, they're just looking to make a sell. It's great you can go in there and you can negotiate with them, okay? But there is an art of negotiation. You don't wanna put your cards on the table. You wanna do a bit of a fact find before you lay your cards on the table. Now the key to it is when you go into the store, you've gone in, let's say beginning of January is probably really slow for them. Or let's say you go end of January because those sales executives and the sales manager really wanna hit target that month. They wanna have a great start to the year and they wanna hit target. So you go in there and you need to have some substance, okay? And what I mean by this, you need to have some evidence to say that you're looking at this particular time, because let's say I'm looking at buying a Rolex Datejust, for example, okay? Um, I've gone and had to look at this Rolex Datejust, and someone has offered me the watch for six and a half thousand pounds. However, they said to me that there would be potentially 
some negotiation they can do. They could give me maybe a 5% discount on the watch, for example. So when I go into that authorized deal, I can say, look, I've just spoken to so-and-so and I'm looking to buy this particular timepiece. I was wondering what sort of offer you can give me. They were like, well, the first question the sales and social will ask you is, are you looking to make the purchase today? Well, you want to dangle a little carrot in front of them to say, look, if you can sort of match the offer or give me even a better offer, I would be willing to buy this watch right now with the immediate effect because I'm lusting over this timepiece. I've been inquiring for a few weeks now, but I've decided today to press the trigger. And I thought I've bought watches from you guys before. I know someone who's recommended you guys for your service and I wanted to come in and see what you guys could potentially offer me for this particular timepiece. What would be your best deal on this purchase? The other thing he will turn around and say, okay, what have they offered you? Now, the best thing is, is to try and play the two authorized dealers against each other. So, you know, if they've offered 5%, you could maybe say they've offered me 6% he'll quickly make a call in head office and say, look, I've got a guy in store who's willing to buy the watch now. Can we match so-and-so's price on that particular timepiece? Because he's a serious guy. He looks like he's gonna, he's gonna purchase the watch today. He comes away and he says, look, I can match that, okay? Rolex is a difficult one, to be honest with you. Not the best example in the world because Rolex authorized dealers are not really too allowed to discount that much on Rolex products or they will lose their authorized license to sell that product. However, there are other things you can get in return as part of that negotiation. So they could offer you a free travel case for that Rolex. It might not even be a Rolex travel case. It could be a Breitling. Breitling, Tudor to a certain extent, Omega. There are great deals to be had if you negotiate quite heavily. I've been in position where we bought my friend on Omega Seamaster, the new James Bond one over the weekend, and he managed to get 14.9% off the actual retail price, which was absolutely brilliant. It's the time of year it is, you know, that's how we approached it. We went in, we mentioned that, you know, so-and-so's offered us this amount, and they came back, they called head office, and they were able to match it, and he bought the watch, for example, on the spot, okay? And that is the key, guys. So you've got to have some real subs. There's no point saying, oh, I've been offered it, this and that. You've got to actually mention their competitors. Mention that they're offering this watch at this price. So I'm, if you can't offer me at this price, I'm going to buy it from them. What can you do? There are, There is room for negotiation. People are under the myth, under the impression when you buy a brand new watch, there is no negotiation when purchasing these watches. If a watch is over £2,000, guys, with all honesty, there's going to be room for some negotiation. Even some of the more entry-level timepieces, from anything from three to £500, there's always going to be room for a slight negotiation. And if you can't get them low on the price, get as many goodies as you can. Travel case, you know, cleaning kits, whatever they can offer you is absolutely great. So I hope that helps today, guys, on my approach on how I go about um, you know, negotiating to get a discount on a brand new timepiece. So let's summarize the key points there. One is to check the location, okay? You know, don't go to the most expensive area to buy your timepiece. The likelihood is, if you're going to Harrods, they're not like, even all the boutiques within Harrods are not likely to give you the best possible discount. You'll get a discount, but it's gonna be even a harder stroll because they know the type of clientele they've got, they've got the traffic, coming through on a regular basis. If you go to a more, you know, I don't want to name any locations or geographic locations, to a working class area, but have an authorized dealer there, their, their job is slightly a little bit harder selling watches. Their sales figures won't be as good as in the geographic areas that are the rich and filthy rich. The people are fed with a silver of spoon and money is no object. So they are used to negotiating and giving slightly better discounts. Secondly, Go in there with some real evidence, substance, okay? It's, if you go in somewhere and you say, look, someone's offered me this watch for this price, but you don't make it very clear, you don't give them a clear example, it means nothing. It's a bit like going to court and saying that you're innocent, but you have no evidence to back it up. So mention their names. These are your unique selling points. Mention their competitors. I've gone in and I've spoken to so-and-so, at so-and-so company, and they've quoted me the best deal they can do on this particular timepiece is so-and-so amount of money. 
That is your unique selling point. This is your pitch when you're going to negotiate a price for that particular timepiece. Secondly, lastly, sorry, thirdly, sorry if I've lost count of all these points, um, dangle a carrot to say, look, how serious you are, because they want to qualify that you're a serious customer and they're not going to waste their time negotiating with their sales manager and a sales manager calling her head office saying, can we make this still happen today, right now? A lot of the time they can do the deal if you're willing to make the transaction on the day. That is the key, okay? So substance is key, you go down that approach. You don't wanna bullshit too much, excuse my language. You don't wanna over exaggerate the percentage they've given you. Maybe do do your research, ask, ask a few authorized dealers to make a comparison to get the best possible quote, because depending on their situation, there may be a bit more flexibility from one authorized dealer to the other, depending on the situation they are with their sales. You know, they've had three months in a row bad sales, they're probably going to give a little bit just to boost up their, their target. They get a little bit closer to their target, guys. So I hope that helps, guys. Um, you know, the next video I'm going to do is basically how to negotiate and buy used watches. What you need to do um, to go about finding a good used example, the criteria, the factors, the negotiations that needs to go place, and what you need to do long term to build those relationships, relationships with the used boutiques anyway guys thanks for watching if you enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell below so you don't miss any of my content going forward i'm going to continue my real watch talk i hope this helped guys because there is a myth out there that there is no room for negotiation on any of the luxury watch brands there's room to be negotiated on cartier breitling Omega, IWC, Hublot, you name it, Tag Heuer, believe me, you can really squeeze them hard on Tag Heuer and Breitling and IWC for sure, even Rolex, believe me, if you don't ask, you don't get, you've got to try, you've got to squeeze them as hard as you can because these products, let's be honest, they are bloody overpriced, let's not be under any illusion, but if you want to buy it brand new and you want that reassurance that you're buying an original authentic product, get your negotiation skills to hand, work on them, practice them, maybe do a few role plays with your friends so when you go in there you can objection handle in terms of their reservations about doing it because they will lose you as a customer. Let them know you're a watch collector as well guys and you want to basically build a long-term relationship with them and uh, you know it's going to be lucrative both ways guys. Anyway thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.